came home one day and found my furnace clicking. It was trying to turn on, but just couldn't. Called a technician who came out, checked it out, told me the furnace was actually fine and the cause was the thermostat. The problem was in the thermostat, but it wasn't the thermostat's fault. I was not previously exposing the common wire, which it needed to charge its battery, but it didn't matter. I actually wanted to move forward with this project for a while, and now I finally had my excuse. Today, I'm running my furnace with this internet connected relay. It's an ESP32 on just a handmade development board. It's connected to the internet by MQTT. That board you saw on the floor is connected by wire to these alligator clips. My temperature sensors will consist of an ESP32 with an HTU21D temperature sensor. Very simple circuit as you can see here. I'm actually going to have an army of four deployed around the house so I can get an average temperature. Okay, so here are my seven reasons to love this $60 homemade internet connected thermostat. But before I go through them all, a couple things. You've got to consult a professional unless you really, really know what you're doing. If you make a mistake, you might literally be playing with fire. There are a lot of things that can go wrong. You may have a simple configuration that you can turn on and off, but you may not. And if you don't, you can cause a lot of damage, possibly a fire, and cost yourself a lot of money. Definitely talk to a professional first. I did. The second thing is check your own confidence. You're now playing with your HVAC system. The cost of a mistake can be very expensive or worse. Lastly, I recommend you just ask yourself, are you going to be around? If you've got a trip planned in the next week or two, might not be the best time to do this. I'm still in COVID mode. I'm going to be around here for a couple months. I'll have the time to confirm that this thing's built correctly and it's not going to cause me a major problem. So let's get into it. Distributed temperature sensing. This is a benefit that reveals itself as soon as you turn the system on. Let me explain. Here's a rough layout of my house. Red dot is where the thermostat's located. Gray dot is where I have my furnace. Uh, actually, the top half of the house is covered by this system. The bottom half is on a different thermostat, but let's just focus on the top half for now. In the mornings, the sun is coming from the east. My office is gonna get hot. In the evenings, we got sun coming from the west. Now the living room's getting a little bit hot and the office can be a bit cool. At night, this bedroom with two walls gets very cold, but that temperature input does not make it to this sensor. When you turn the stove or oven on in the kitchen, that heat does eventually make it to here, but there's a bit of a delay. So how can we improve on that? As good as my smart thermostat was, it still only took the temperature in one location. What I'm doing with my new system is putting one temperature sensor in the kitchen, one in the living room, one in the bedroom, one in the office. Here's the temperature and humidity data coming in from all those different sensors, but I've got an app running that tabulates everything quite nicely. So here's the four rooms. You can see the bedroom is running about three degrees colder than the rest of the house. Well, if I just took the temperature in the one location, obviously the bedroom is gonna be freezing. It doesn't have a major impact on the average, but it does bring it down a little. So this bedroom gets a vote and says, hey, I'm kind of cold, let's turn the furnace up a little bit. There's a lot of things that affect the temperature. And if you're only taking the temperature for one place in your house, you're not getting a good reading. These four temperatures being averaged have given me a much more pleasant environment since I've started this app. It's been my favorite feature and it's so simple. Number two, on time and off time analysis. This one is so easy to see why it's better with the new system. So I was working on this circuit and I was going to use it to monitor the current on the hot wire for my furnace. And I wanted to know when was it on, when was it off. But here's the thing. I'm the one who's telling the furnace to turn on and turn off. I already know through programming when the thing is on. So I don't need the sensor anymore. You can see here in the JavaScript, I'm actually already tabulating the off average and the on average. This is actually the number of minutes it was off and on, on average for the last 10 cycles. So every time it turns on and then eventually turns off, that's one on cycle. The last 10 cycles lasted 13.19 minutes. Reason to love number three, custom on interval or temperature band. So your furnace is gonna be designed for some optimum on time uh, in terms of efficiency, but regardless of how it's designed, you've got other parameters that affect it. You've got whether or not you've closed your vents, you've got the size of your house, the temperature outside, and of course your thermostat's gonna have its own opinion as to how long this thing should be on. What is the likelihood that it's all set to the optimum? I don't know, but one thing I've discovered is this is the first time in my life I've had the opportunity to tailor this to my liking. I think it's clear that if you cycle your furnace more often, you're going to potentially operate at a less efficient level, and you're also going to increase wear and tear. But you know what? It's more comfortable. I like it. Let me show you here. Currently, I'm changing the settings on my thermostat by using the command line. If I want to see what my current settings are, I type in this folder, node get. Currently, I'm setting to a target of 70 degrees with a spread of 0.4. 
that means the low temperature, the turn on point is 69.6 degrees and the high, the turn off is at 70.4. Sure enough, you see below, my furnace is on and it's gonna turn off at 70.4 degrees. I can make the band more narrow. I'm gonna change the 0.4 to a 0.2. Okay, my range is now 69.8 and 70.2. And you can see below that the off at 7.4 changed to off at 7.2. So this has got the update. These cycle times are gonna come down. Yes, technically I'm probably losing efficiency, but I am gaining comfort and that's what I want right now. I actually like this 0.2 spread. The furnace I believe is still gonna be on for about six minutes at a time, but the temperature band in my house is very tight. I'm not cold before it turns on. I'm not hot when it's blowing for too long. It's more comfortable. And there you go. Look at the logs a few hours later. We're at six minute on time and 14 minute off time. Maybe not the best use of my furnace, but very comfortable in the house. Reason to love number four, improved away from home cost reduction. Yes, all smart thermostats at this point can use your phone location data to notify the system when you're away from the house and it will then lower the furnace temperature. What I've noticed is even though the temperature in the air is getting closer to the range you expect, the things in your home are still cold. So you come home, you can sit at your desk, the chair and the desk are cold and it's actually uncomfortable. What I'm going to do to make an improvement on this because I can customize is I'm going to use my location data to ramp up the temperature. As I get closer to home, it's going to already be warming up before I get there. I'm going to have a seamless transition back into my house at a regular temperature. I installed OwnTracks on my phone. It's an open source location tracker. You can set it up to send the information to the location of your choice, in this case, my server. So this is private. No one else is getting this information. I created an app to use that information to publish the number of meters from my phone location to my house. And when I go ahead and forward my location, you can see it says I'm seven meters from home. So watch what happens when I go to the gym, which I'm going to do right now. You can see from my timestamps that I worked out for 46 minutes and maybe that needs a little improvement. I'm going to live code this right now. I'll make the thermostat app accept an adjustment value based on my location. And I'm going to write another app that tracks my location and does some math to generate that adjustment value. Okay, that one checks out. Let's go to number five, partner customization. So for this one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the distance app and I'm going to get the distance information for both me and Suhi. And I'm going to make a second adjustment called personal adjustment. What it's going to be is when I'm around the house, we keep the temperature at its baseline. And when Suhi's here, we're going to bump it up half a degree. So that's one way we can customize it for, uh, I actually call it partner adjustment, but I guess it applies to anybody who would be at your house. So here we go. On the right, you see partner adjustment. It's currently at zero because of me. But the personal adjustment, therefore, the target temperature will get bumped up by 0.5 when Suhi's around. Reason number six, in-home location adjustments. I already mentioned that the bedroom is consistently about two degrees colder than the rest of the house, or at least the average of the other three sensors. And so what I'm going to do is take these two motion detectors and place them, as you see here, the logic is going to be simple. If you pass the door to the room and then show up in the room, you're in the room. If you pass the door to the room and never again show up in the room, you're obviously not in the room. I'm going to keep track of whether or not someone's in the room. And we already know that this room is about two degrees colder than the average of the other three rooms. So I'm going to set the thermostat to key off of this value only so long as you're in the bedroom. Now, if you just pop in for a moment, that won't have much of an effect because we are using a rolling average of all four temperature sensors. So, so if you pop in the room for just a few moments, it's going to have at most a minor effect. But if you're in there sleeping the system will start to use this temperature as the house temperature to drive the thermostat. And effectively what it'll do is it'll bring the temperature up another two degrees. Now, yes, technically uh, there's an efficiency loss because you're heating the rooms in the house you're not using. There, of course, are better ways to do this. But in the meantime, this is all I have, and this is going to make sleeping more comfortable.
okay, I got it. And in what seems like a strange experiment, I'm just kind of going and laying on my bed. And the system then recognizes that I'm in bed and kicks the furnace on. And the house does warm up about one degree. And when I leave the bedroom, the furnace goes back to its original mode. All right, finally, we're at number seven, the heat loss coefficient analysis. I was actually able to take everything that's happening in the house and compare it to the outside air temperature at my house and use that to analyze the rate at which heat is leaving my home. I went to this openweathermap.org. They've got a free tier. They've got an API where you can get a key and make a web request, and they'll return to you the temperature, wind speed, et cetera, for the lat long coordinates that you give it. We know that heat transfer is proportionate to temperature differential. So at the end of the month, if you know how many BTUs you burned and you know the average temperature differential, you now know the B2 loss rate for every one degree of temperature differential. And with that, and what that number represents is your house's ability to hold heat. This number by itself is not particularly meaningful, but if this system was in several houses, the houses could then be compared to each other. Who has the more or less effective insulation? It's pretty impressive that for such an inexpensive system, we can turn around and for no additional charge, run an analysis on the quality of the insulation of our home. So that's the internet connected thermostat. I hope you enjoyed it. Point is with five ESP32s, one relay, and four temperature sensors, and a little bit of patience to put together some programming, you can have a system that's way more sophisticated than your typical smart thermostat, and all that will cost you probably under $60. I've got a number of videos planned for the winter of 2021, so please subscribe. If you've got some stories to tell about some similar technologies, please leave some comments and let's have a conversation. Thanks. Mm -hmm.